welcome to Friday Night Vino. With Father's Day on Sunday, I thought it was a good time for us to have a Father's Day chat. Because normally at this time of year, we see a lot of posts and some of them are not in favor of the fathers or dads and I purposely put both because people refer to both and I want to be respectful for your point of view so whether you feel like the father or the dad is a more prominent term in your life you use whatever it is that you need to to feel comfortable so Father's Day what usually happens on Father's Day? On Father's Day, we usually see some posts that are saying Happy Father's Day. We get, you know, pictures, people saying, you know, some of the things that they would not have been able to do if they did not have these fathers in their lives or father figures in their lives. But majority, I don't know if you've noticed, on social media is usually um, women bashing men, right? And one of the things that I cannot stand seeing or hearing is when a woman is like, you know, well, I'm the mother and the father. Now, to a point, I can understand the perspective of that. But at this time, I don't want to focus on the negative of what it is that the mother is doing. And so, therefore, she wants to be praised on Father's Day. I actually want to shift the focus to those who fathers or dads who have been in your lives and actually let's give them the floor because the negativity spreads so much faster than the positivity that we need to allow for them to to be their voice actually you know because it's what it's more women right than it is men so we need to be their voice we need to be the voice of the actual dads and fathers that are good okay that are active in their children's lives even as adults you know it, and regardless to what the situation is they never left you know they they need some praise so that's what I want to do tonight I want to talk about the fathers and the dads that actually have been around so if you know a a good dad a good father please tag them and let them know that we are trying to big them up on this Friday night vino okay So first I will start and talk about my dad because I love my dad. My dad, I am one of five of my father's children. I am the youngest girl. And my father has, even though my parents were never married, my father never left our side. And I know that there are some people who have a uh, misconception that, you know, the parents actually have to be together or they have to be married in order for the children to be able to have a, a stable and cohesive relationship with both parents. But that is not my situation. That's not my case. I actually have a scenario of my mom and my dad were not together. They did not get married, yet my father never left my life and I think that it's very difficult for some people to understand that because a lot of times people attach the parent aspect with the relationship and not understanding that it really is two separate entities the relationship that the parent has with their child should be separate from the relationship that the two parents have regarding the child so each child, the father should have the relationship with their children, the mother should have a relationship with their children, and then the parents should be able to, you would, in the perfect world, right? The parents should be able to work together, have enough respect with one another to allow for that relationship with each respective parent to flow naturally. Where we come into the conflict, and it especially falls on dads um, getting pushed away. It happens where we fall into the conflict is you know because the woman more often than not has the children in their possession right so it really is what she says goes and if the breakup was bitter and all of those factors that have nothing to do with the child eventually it ends up pushing that father away that dad away and that is impacting the children it impacts the children it more so hurts the child so I did not have that 
I did not have that situation where since my parents were not together that I was not allowed to have a relationship with my father. My father has always been in my life and you know even though he has his quirks about him you know because perfection absolutely does not exist I wouldn't trade him for the world. He was hey Jackie um, I wouldn't trade him for the world because you know he's very supportive and definitely like out of all of my siblings I was the most I guess you can say outgoing <laughs> To the point where they were like where did you get her from she doesn't belong to the rest of us like she's an alien yeah it kind of was like that like I was the most most you know the loudest the most outgoing most active you know most dramatic yes I am very dramatic so um my father was actually very receptive to that and he you know always and he still like would tell my siblings you know just leave her alone leave her alone that's the way she is leave her alone and so you know I don't know if he knows but I'm gonna make sure that I tell him but I don't know if he knows how important that was for me growing up that before anyone else in my family accepted you know my nature <laughs> being the way that I am my father actually accepted it first and he is the first one who defended my personality I guess you can say right so I want to thank him for that and I'm gonna make sure that um when I find him because you know he's retired but he's you know he's a healthy active retiree so when I find him on Sunday I'm gonna make sure that that's something that I tell him so I want to know about some of the experiences that you guys have had and you know good bad or indifferent let me know what has your father dad experience been now as you guys are um, typing I also would like to give a big up to my son's father okay my son's father is my ex-husband so I was married and we are doing a co-parenting and I am very thankful to be frank I'm very thankful for his cooperation with me you know and not to say that you know he's doing it for me but it's his willingness to still want to be in his son's life even though him and i are not together and that that just removes so much tension if you can get past the personal feelings of what your relationship was and just switch the focus right to the child then the benefit is for the child right it's not about him and I it's about making sure that he sees a healthy dynamic between his parents so that you know he doesn't feel like he is being um, forced to choose a side and I think that as a result of my parents doing a co-parenting where back in the 70s in the early 80s I don't even think we were using co-parenting as a word but that's actually what they were doing that's what they were doing there would still be times where my mom would cook a dinner and you know my dad would would get a plate you know they were cordial and they kept the peace I never saw my parents fight now that's not to say that it didn't happen what I'm saying was is that they kept a child out of adult business and that is where we come into issues today right in like co-parenting and things is very hard for some people because we put the child in the middle and we have the child in adult business and that is just so unfair and if people can truly remember to make sure that the child is the focus not how I feel about you not how you feel about me whether or not I did or did not do whether or not you feel I do or do not have that's like irrelevant and so Tasha says that she's blessed with supportive and caring dad and stepdad. Yeah, so you you have, you know, you have a twofer, which is absolutely a blessing. And you have great relationships with both. And I imagine if you have great relationships with both that, you know, you did not feel a need to choose a father. You know, because I think that sometimes we, um, the, the parents, we make the child try to choose a parent and a lot of times the dad is the one that loses now this is not for those who flat out 
are deadbeats. This this discussion is not about y'all. I just want you to know because you know what it is that you're not doing. Okay, I'm talking about the dads that you know what it's like to get up in the middle of the night and have to do a feeding and the kid won't sleep. Okay, you you let mom you know have her time to herself. Like the mom isn't the only one who can't shower, can't have you know dinner in peace needing to stick their head what out of what out of the bathroom because they're trying to go to the bathroom like every two minutes because somebody's hollering outside of the door i'm talking about them you know the one where the father is yelling okay well leave your mother alone or you know that father's like okay well do you want me to come and pick him or her up so that you can get some time like those are the ones who are truly understanding you know understanding what it means to be a parent and they're all in and i'm also not talking to the ones where you feel like that by you paying a child support that you're doing your job because I hate to tell you but child support isn't even five percent <laughs> it's nuts whatever you guys are paying I promise you that that child is costing more in a two-day period for what you give in a week or a two week so this isn't about this isn't about you know oh well I pay my child support no you know, child support is, is something where if I could choose between whether or not having the parent spend time with a child versus paying child support, I will always choose time. Why? Because a child is not going to remember child support, but they will remember the memories and the foundation that they built with their parent. Time is much more important and it's much more valuable to build those memories than money ever will. And I think that some women get so caught up in, you know, I want child support, I want child support, and all child support is not alike. <laughs> you know, it's like, just like all dads are not alike, all child support are not alike. You do, as with anything, there are always bad apples there's bad apples in any batch. But just like us as women, we don't want to be collectively looped in into, you know, being a baby mom. Like, don't call me a baby mom. It's like I'm my son's mother or I'm my ex-husband's ex-wife. I'm Shamika. Don't baby mama me. Like, I'm not in the market for that. I don't like that term. So it's like, give me more respect than that, especially when our relationship and our dynamic warrants it and i think a lot of times there are certain women where on the whole child support aspect you know they're doing it out of greed they're doing it out of greed and they're like you know well that's the only way that i can can hit them that's the only way i can hit them hard and sometimes you know i'm gonna tell y'all sometimes i'm not against that especially if the man is not willing to do what it is that he needs to do but like I said, all child support is not alike. So some men do end up getting the short end of the stick and being lumped into a very generic system when some of them really are trying to be there for their children. So to all the dads, I want that, to all the dads, the fathers that are active in your child's life, you check on them, you do homework, you want to know how their day is, you take them on a, the adventures, because to me, you know, like anything that you do outside, even if it's something with your girlfriends, like if we go outside, it's an adventure. <laughs> By the time we finish, it's going to be an adventure. So to all of those dads that are active, you know, in helping to create the foundation of your your children's lives i commend you and i do wish you a sincere happy father's day so what type of um what type of other relationships do you guys feel benefit and and don't benefit you know dads you know another thing guys i don't like and i don't know if you ever notice is like restaurants you ever notice like on mother's day so you can't even you can't even freaking get a reservation like that's how much it's just zipped up father's day you don't even have to go through those motions you pretty much just be like all right this is where we're gonna go and for the most part can just walk in so it's like doesn't that kind of tell you something about the dynamic and the we do have a lack of appreciation as a society 
you know just as a society i do think that um you know they all have been lumped in to this one category and it's just it's just not fair so just to recap really quick, a couple of things that I don't like. I don't like, you know, the social media posts when, you know, women are like, I'm the mother and I'm the father and happy Father's Day to me. You know, I'm not, I'm not team you when you do stuff like that. That's a no. And I also don't like that, you know, the, the whole dynamic of, of the fatherhood, you know, is, is getting lumped into all of the bad apples, you know. And as a result of it, it's like, okay, a woman can say, one thing in one instance and say something that he didn't do and before you know it that completely defines him as a father as a whole but she's not telling you what she did like that that's because i don't i don't seen some stuff <laughs> i don't seen some stuff and i don't heard some mess okay and that's the reason why i'm saying this i'm saying that there are several times where we do give the women too much credit and they're causing the commotion all fathers are not bad. All dads are not bad. There are really a lot out there that are trying. So for those that are trying, this message is for you. I see you. I want you to know that. And I appreciate you guys. Hey, Mark. Happy Father's Day to you, sir. I hope that all is well. Thank you for chiming in. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, um, anything else you guys want to add to that? I have, um, like I said, I have, I am for my father, I am one of five, right? And usually what we do for him, or is there anything special that you guys do? Let's talk about that. Anything that you guys do if you live near, near them or not. Um, what we try and do is, um, we'll, we'll find a place and just go have some dinner and we'll usually like hang out at my dad's house because he's a big family man like he loves family but it's not anything that's um new for us because we actually make that a routine so I don't know if that's something that you guys do but my father's big into family time so we do our best to try and make sure that even though we all have our lives going on and we're well into adulthood that we will at least check on him I check on my father every week like it's a requirement <laughs> and when he was working um because his schedule like was so crazy my day was Thursday so each of the kids had a different day to check in so it was cool good evening Sean and so Tasha says that she agrees that there are a lot of great fathers out there and they don't get enough credit no they don't they don't and so that's why if you guys know some great fathers or dads i want to make sure that you you tag them and let them know that you know there is a there is a pool there's a pool of people that's rooting for you okay and you are not alone and i don't all dads fathers are not alike i do not lump y'all into the same category i want you to know that I will definitely tell my father happy Father's Day, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, um, yeah, I got to find my dad. That's what I was saying. Like, I got to find my dad, find out uh, where we're going to have some dinner or what it is that we are going to, to do on Sunday. And he doesn't need anything. My, when I tell you that my father doesn't need anything but time, like he never wants you to buy him anything. He just likes time. And it's with him and definitely with my mom as well. But since we're focusing on Father's Day, it's with him that with age, I start to appreciate the time being spent with someone that you love. Like that is something that is priceless. And <clears throat> you go through these different phases where you're thinking that more certain things are more important than others, right? People always put like money on the top of the list, anything materialistic kind of car you drive, house you have, you know, what, what kind of work you have, what your salary's like, you know? Usually it's stuff like that, people put value in. But definitely as I get older and I see my parents aging and my siblings and myself like time is an irreplaceable commodity and people i think people truly do lose sight as to how precious it is because money material items all that stuff can be replaced time and love 
it cannot and i also do want to to definitely give a respectful shout out to all of those that have lost their fathers who their fathers were a big impact in their life and helped to set you know their standards and their foundations and that they are missing them dearly you know i want to make sure that you know we give an honorable mention to those that we have lost as well because just because they are gone they are not forgotten so happy father's day too to anyone who has lost their dad and sometimes people tend to get sad like around mother's day and father's day or their birthdays when they have lost someone so just always know that if you had that type of relationship and your parent is gone they loved you and they still loved you even though they're not here Mm -hmm. hey Julie yeah definitely never forgotten nope never forgotten so my dad turned 75 this year and my mom turned 70 would you believe me if I told you that before this year I didn't know how old either of my parents were why because they were so tight-lipped and my father spent the majority of my life telling me he was in his 30s okay so you know as a kid you can be a little slow and maybe just like a little dumb so then it was like as i was into my teens okay and i'm like dad how is it that you haven't aged because every time his birthday would come guys listen to me my father was so faithful to his lie he was so loyal to his lie he never got older than 34 never he would juggle 29 to 34 so all right here i go becoming a teenager and i'm like did i think that you've been saying that you was like 32 for like five years he's like no i haven't you weren't paying attention no nope. see this is when people make you question yourself and then you be wondering am i dumb is it me i know but see it's like 365 days and you like okay that's a year ago i am a teenager my attention span is short maybe he right my father fooled me for a few years y'all y'all don't hear me though he fooled me for a few years and then i got to the point when i was like 19 and i'm like no daddy no <laughs> You ain't gonna be telling me this again. You're not, you're not. And he was so tickled, so tickled, okay? So from that point, he, he would just be like, I'm going to be that age until you get that age. That's what he said to me. He was like, I'm not, my age is not gonna move until you become that age. So then when I got in my 30s, <laughs> I'm telling you, he was faithful. Faithful to his age lie. Faithful. So, okay, so I get into my 30s and I was like, Dad, you do know that I don't believe you anymore. It cracks him up. I want you to know he giggles so hard. I'm like, I don't believe you anymore. I was like, because there is no way both of us is 32. There's no way. Totally tickled. So, all right, let's fast forward to this year. We go out and we get some dinner because his birthday is March 8th. We go out, we get some dinner. So we sitting here at the table. So I'm like, dad, seriously? Like you're a senior citizen and we're gonna need to start looking at like insurance papers and life insurance and all that stuff. For real, how old are you? Stop playing, for real, stop playing. And so he was so tickled and he was like, um, what'd he say? I'm 25, then he still didn't get an answer. This is what he said, I'm 25 years shy of 100. Who does that? Who does that? Why did it have to be like an obstacle course? Okay. Does he still wear, what did you say? What did you say? Does he still wear his little hat? Yes, of course he does. So I'm like, why does this have to be an obstacle course? Why are you making me jump through hoops? So then I did the math, you know, and he's like, he was 25 years shy of a hundred. So we were like, you're 75. So now Come to find out, I'm the only one that had been harassing him about the age, but the rest of the family was curious too. See, cause I'm the big mouth, right? I just be like, I need to know. Somebody answer my question, I need the truth. So that pretty much was like a good portion of our conversation at our end of the table. Kept saying, for real? You 75? Like 75? <laughs> See, when you go 41 years of your life, 
not knowing how old your father is, and then you find out how old they are. You're like mind blown, just mind blown. So yeah, my dad is 75 and he held that. I need y'all to know that he held his story 41 years of my life, 41 years, never told us, but yeah, but now we know. <laughs> And I only think I only think the reason why he told us was because I said to him, you know, we need like beneficiary information. What are you doing with the house? Like we need to be having these life discussions. So I guess he was like, all right, I guess I, I guess I got to tell him now. But yeah, so that's the story of my father and his age. <laughs> My mother too, she was, she was funny acting about it. She was, but you know, she didn't give me like the whole story that my dad did. My mother, she would just be like, oh, you don't need to know. Oh, you don't need to know. And I'm not the one that ended up finding that out. My other sister ended up finding that out because she wanted to throw her a party. And I'm like, oh, okay. Which then she made me host, but it was cool. It was cool. So yeah, tonight we're just doing some honorable mentions on parents, on parents. Ma, you want to give a shout out to your dad? You want to give him a tag? Tasha, I don't know if your dad is online or not. Dads, because you said you have two. Um, give him a shout out. That's for sure, a big glass of wine. Do you know that tonight, Mark, actually I am drinking water. I'm drinking water. I wasn't in the mood for any wine tonight, so... But usually, <laughs> darling, yes, it's full to the rim. <laughs> Shout out to Fred. Shout out to Fred. Well, I'm glad that I made y'all laugh with my little dad story. <laughs> I'm glad I made y'all laugh. Did you guys want to add anything else or any um anything else you want to add about Father's on Father's Day? Any love? What kind of love can we give them? What kind of love? I'm gonna go through and um, I'm gonna go through and check some of my friends' lips, and I'm gonna give them a tag. I'm gonna give them a tag and tell them just watch this vino, cause tonight was a shout out about you, and we thank you. We thank you for not leaving. And you know what? The thing is, is that leaving is so easy. Leaving is easy because there's no work in leaving, and I think that that is. That is where, you know, the kids lose. Because they're just like, oh, things didn't work out, me and your mother. I'm not even going to fight for you. And my heart goes out to those babies. Because those babies then turn into the adults. And they either are going to go one or of two ways. They are either going to, to say, all right, well, my mother didn't. So, sh you know, I didn't need a father. So my children don't need one. Or they're going to say, okay, well, I need to do something better. But more often than not, they follow the path of, well... My mother, I was raised without my father, so I can do it too. And so then it just becomes like a vicious cycle. It becomes a vicious cycle. And I really do hope as, you know, definitely with us being older parents, because, um, you know, I do think that women are starting to be more career oriented first and family second. So that allows for some years of maturity that, you know, after at least maybe two generations, we can start breaking that cycle, especially in the African-American community. I really do hope so. But the only thing we can do is start with our child, right? And I think that for, I'm not sure if I had said it, but if I didn't, I think one of the points that I had wanted to make as far as like the co-parenting was that, you know, my parents, even though it wasn't a term in the late 70s, early 80s if so it wasn't widely used um my parents were co-parenting right because they still got along and i really do think that that helped me today when my marriage dissolved to say okay well one thing that i don't want i don't want friction i don't want friction i don't want conflict we need to just make sure that you know, whatever it is that we are feeling, whatever it is that we need to work through, we're going to need to work through that on the side. But the person that should not be impacted is our child. For all intensive purposes, our child still needs to see a united front for all intensive purposes. 
You know, whatever your message is, is my message. So that requires for us to communicate. And it doesn't mean that we need to talk every day and I need to know what you're doing and how you're doing and who you with. Nope, don't care. <laughs> nope. It's just for purposes of the upbringing, raising, and rearing of the child, we need to be on the same accord. And I think that if both parents are able to deliver the same message, then it removes a good portion of the confusion that the child experiences. And then if when they become an adult, they now have a healthy example. If that happens to be a scenario that they have, they have a healthy example and they know that it can work. You know, because I think that people seem to think it can't work. You have to be together. You, you have to be married. You have to be boyfriend, girlfriend. Like, we have to be together. But a lot of times when the, the relationship is over and you stay together, you do more damage to the children versus if you separate and then just have an understanding as to how you want to raise a child. Because I do not feel that we give children enough credit for understanding what is going on. Children totally can feel that unspoken tension when it's no longer meshing. The older that they get, we, we don't give our kids enough credit. We don't. So they do. They feel it. And we don't give them. We don't give them enough credit and respect their feelings to think that they feel it. Because I think that a lot of times the better, healthier situation for the child is to be apart rather than to be together. But that's just my opinion. And that's just what worked for me. So... All right, guys, so all of you dads out there, I want to make sure that, you know, you guys enjoy your weekend, whatever it is that you do. Um, be safe, be healthy, be happy, enjoy your children, enjoy your families. And you guys know my motto that there is never a wrong time to read. What? There's never a wrong time to hear the right thing. And I hope that you have received this right positive message. Remember to tag a dad or father and hit the share button. I'll see you guys next week. Night.